Okay, so I went ahead and put pipe sealant on both of uh, these plugs here, tightened them down to 25 foot-pounds. I figure if anything, worst case scenario, if I lose some fluid, I can pour some more in the uh, where the half shaft goes in and uh, remove the uh, plug again here, but it's full now and I know that for sure. So I also moved over the uh, vent tube here, so I just popped it off of the old cover and just slid it back onto the new one. Okay, so the orientation that this is going to go on, this is a stock bushing. This one goes under here. Then this goes on through the actual differential. Um, then you're going to go ahead and put on the top piece. And then there's a washer that goes on top of it. Um, and so that's the orientation. I'll show you again when it's in the car. Okay, so we just wheeled the transmission jack under here with the differential on it. We're ready to lift it up. We're going to secure it with the rear two bolts and then work on the front mounting part of it. Okay, so with the transmission jack, we've lifted the differential up into here and we've put the back two bolts in to the cover first just to kind of hold it in place. There is some give in this bushing, allows it to rock a little bit. So we're going to do that first and then work on the front. Now this next part is optional. I removed the two bolts that hold the dampener on to this bracket. It's a lot easier to just deal with only the bracket when you're upside down under the car getting everything uh, together with just your hands. So I lifted the differential up with the transmission jack and I put the bolts in the rear of the cover to hold it in place and now I'm working on the front with the transmission jack still in place. Okay, so to put this back together, you're gonna take the top shim that goes uh, on top closest to the top mount. Then this bushing, okay. And these two go on the top, like so. Then from the bottom, you have the bracket that has the dampener, okay. And then this one that comes up. Now, you do wanna find the markings on the front. We'll get to that in a minute, but that goes up through here and you make a nice little cookie, little sandwich. Okay, and then we still have the bottom bracket that will be going through here, but just one at a time. We're just, to keep everything in place, we're just gonna go ahead and thread this through right now. So that's how it's gonna go, and we'll very loosely just put the net on the top. just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, so that's just to get it in place because we still need this bar to come in through here, attach back to our bolts, and that's what these are actually gonna go up into, but that's how it's assembled. What we did next is we brought in this bar, which is still somewhat loose right now, because it's the bottom piece. Okay. And so we pulled that bolt back out, because we were just securing everything with it, and then put this bar into place, and then drove that bolt up into it and put the washer on the top. So we're back how we started. So this is all in place. Um, we still need to drive these bolts forward now and get them to go into this bar on both sides. So that's the next step, but uh, we have the rear bolts in, just supporting it. They're not tightened all the way down, they're just loose, but they're in. And uh, now we have this whole front setup done as well. Okay, so we started driving this 22 millimeter control arm bolt in. And as we drive it in, the uh, threads are now showing and it's lining up and going through our nice bar here. That's this bar, if you remember. So now all we have to do is put our nut on that one and crank down both sides. And then now we'll just do the same on that side, of course. So this is a view from the back side where the bracket is. We're driving that uh, bolt back through. And the idea is you want to line everything up just perfectly. And you'll see that I'm lifting and lowering with the jack to get this perfectly lined up. Then you should be able to turn your ratchet and drive the bolt back in, screwing it back in. 
Sometimes that doesn't always work, as you'll see here, and it just spins. There are no threads inside the bushing mount here at all. It's only the nut that goes on the other side that has the threads. So if it won't walk in, you can uh, result. To, you can really just punch it through with a hammer. Okay, so we're just tightening down our control arm bolts here, making sure it's going through our frame bracket here. And uh, this one was giving me trouble. It wasn't threading in. As you go to tighten this, sometimes they thread their way in, and if it just spins and you have it perfectly lined up, you may need to use good old Thor. I mean, I, that dumbbell has saved me more than more than once. And uh, anyway, it was just spinning no matter what, and so I just gave it a tap here, drove it right through. Uh, if everything's lined up and that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. So anyway, I'm going to tighten that one down over there, this side, we're just finishing up here, 22 millimeter and the 15 sixteenths open end wrench here. And uh, as we tighten this, the wrench is automatically hitting. So that holds it in place as we crank this down, but we're going to finish uh, tightening those both up. Okay. And then we tightened out the two uh, bolts here on the bottom. And so it was a 15 millimeter down here and then an 18 millimeter up at the top. Okay, so the next step now is to take the half shaft and start to put it into the axle. And you'll have to move it back and forth until it goes into the, you know, into the teeth properly. So as you move it in and you see that it's starting to go, as you move it back and forth, you'll notice the front uh, yoke will start to move back and forth. So that way you know the teeth are starting to line up. Okay, now you're not going to be able to put it all the way in quite yet. Just get it started. Once it's started, then you want to come okay, out to the hub. And what you're going to do is basically lift this and put it into place just enough to put this bolt through. And um, even the one on the bottom, okay, you don't have to tighten them down yet, but just put them through. That will hold and push the half shaft that way. Okay, once that's in place, you'll be able to take the half shaft and just slide it all the way into the differential and you'll feel it go into its spot. Okay, after that, you wanna come around to your tie rod end here that we had disassembled and line it up. And so remember the bolt comes up and there's a spacer right here. Okay, so just make sure you get that in the right way. Bolt going up through, through the spacer, and then the nut on the top. Then just tighten all that down and uh, repeat it on this side. Okay, 13 millimeter on the bottom, 15 millimeter on the top. We've tightened down the uh, rear tie rods on both sides. So you wanna make sure you get that done. Okay, and then with your T40 Torx, remember to put on your ABS sensors so they just screw back in, one on each side. Okay, next, line up your drive shaft bolts, put some blue Loctite on them, and bolt them all down. So as in the removal video, just put the brake up or put the car in gear, and then uh, tighten each of these down two at a time, put it back in neutral, spin the drive shaft to to access the other two bolts and tighten them down too. And this is a 12.12 .12 millimeter socket or wrench that we're using here. Next, reinstall the dampener if you removed it, just the two 14 millimeter uh, bolts. Put that back on. Okay, so just make sure that everything's tightened up. 18 millimeter on top and bottom for the top of the knuckle. Same on the bottom, and so just make sure that those are tight. Uh, for the exhaust, we just brought it in as one piece. If you saw the removal portion of the video, um, which I'll put in the description if you haven't seen it yet, we just brought the whole exhaust in. We fed uh, the uh, hanger up into the back there first, and then just popped on uh, the hangers back here, just slid them back over here, and... Here and there, okay, and then just reconnected it at the mid pipe. So exhaust is back on. 
Uh, now we're just going to put the wheels back on. Okay, also you might have got some grease on the rotor here when you were moving this around, so I put some brake parts cleaner on it and cleaned that disc. And now's a great time to hit the inner of, of your uh, fender wells with Plasti Dip. Makes a nice dark impression on it. Um, I still have a ways to go with it, but I just hit those while the wheels were off and that makes it look real nice. Okay, we installed the wheel. 100 foot-pounds on the uh, lug nuts there and see how nice that black looks with the Plasti Dip inside the wheel well.